Energy ignorance, oil and gas ignorance is at an all time high. And this administration is dumbing the Americans down, the world down. The, the belief that we can transition from fossil fuels to another energy is a complete lie. They have no idea what they are talking about, or maybe they do, and they'd rather keep you delusional so you don't panic. If somebody from the 1800s got into a time machine and came to our time, they would look around at this incredible city that we have built, and they would ask questions like, how is this possible? How do you have so much time? And they'd go into your, your kitchen and they'd see the vast amount of food in your refrigerator and say, how is this possible? Where did you get this food? And then we take them to Walmart, these massive grocery stores with all of this food, with all of this meat, all of this bread, all of this wheat, and they would be shocked. They would be shocked to know that we are not farmers. We're not having to wake up early in the morning to feed the animals, to sow seed, to farm, to ranch, to gather, to hunt, to fish, to prepare, to cook. Waking up early in the morning until and work until late at night and wake up and do it all over again. And then you'd have to explain to them, well, well, this is why. I mean, because we have tractors. And in the, the average American wouldn't be able to explain it to him because they've been so ignorant and so dumbed down because of all the lies. And then it would start to click in your head. You'd be like, well, we have tractors. Well, how, what are, what's a tractor? Well, it has an engine, and it's better than using oxen, and, and you don't have to dig ditches anymore. And he would look at you with eyes that you've never seen before in shock and amazement. And then as you're explaining this to them, your eyes will be open. One barrel of oil equates to 11 years of human labor. One barrel of oil creates 5.7 million BTUs. That equates to 700 kilowatt hours. One human creates 0.6 kilowatt hours a day. That means if you're working eight hours a day, five days a week for 50 weeks, that is equivalent to 11 years. One barrel of oil. 11 years of human labor. The average house has 40 items plugged in at all times and most of these items are not even being used, like a toaster or a microwave or what have you. And it consumes 12 to 15% of our energy. We are so ignorant to how much energy we use because we were born into this thing. I was ignorant to it. I woke up with televisions, with Nintendos, with microwaves, with cities, with cars with being frustrated if there's traffic, frustrated if the drive is 30 minutes is where in the 1800s that 30-minute drive would be a day. And so we have absolutely zero respect for the fossil fuel industry, especially for oil. What took thousands and thousands of years to produce and all we have to do is pay for the cost of extraction. I mean, imagine this. Your parents leave you an inheritance. And this inheritance came from generations long ago, from the beginning of time. And you squandered the wealth in a matter of 30 or 40 years. Everybody would assume that you are very ignorant very young, very dumb, and have zero wisdom. And that's exactly what we're doing with oil. We're drawing it down faster than we're able to produce it. 
I mean, it's no different than taking a tree and taking its fruit off its branches. And after the fruit's gone, you ask, when is the fruit going to produce again? 10,000 years. Well, let's take its leaves. And then you consume all the leaves. What do we have left? The branches. Let's take the branches. Well, the branches are gone. What's left? Well, there's a tree trunk. Let's take that. Well, now all we have is a stump. And that's exactly where we're at with shale oil. Shale oil is the source rock of oil. See, before shale, we had conventional oil wells. Conventional oil wells does not take a massive frack. I mean, they could produce from from these sandstones that we find in pockets in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. We didn't need to frack. And that's where most of our oil came from before shale. Shale migrates, oil and gas migrates to its surface until it finds a trap, maybe a sandstone. And then we encounter these sandstones. And we have to hit the apex of these sandstones. Imagine a rainbow underneath the ground. And each layer being a different layer in the, in the, in the ground. And the apex of that rainbow, the top of the rainbow, is where most of your oil and gas is because oil and gas migrates to its highest point within its own structure. And so all of those apexes, all of those conventional oil sands have been produced. Well, not all of them. There's still many out there, but most of it has. And that's why the big boys like Exxon and Chevron, that's why they went overseas. That's why, that's why they went offshore. Well, they produced all of that. And then they discovered shale, the source rock. And now we have the stump of the tree and we're ripping its roots out. And pretty soon there will be nothing left. Guys, I'm here to tell you the administration in place is not going to tell you this which is why they are doing whatever it takes to transition us from fossil fuels to green energy. But ignorantly, they demonized oil and gas because they didn't understand. They demonized oil and gas, and they made the world believe that if we keep producing oil, we're going to destroy the world. And so now we're in a situation where oil prices are over $100 a barrel. Now, the only reason why Joe Biden is going to the Middle East is because 60 to 65% of the world's oil reserves are in the Middle East, mostly in Saudi Arabia, Iran, Syria. Why do you think Putin is in Syria? Oil. And so... You guys, history repeats itself. In the recent history in 2000, if you look at what happened in Germany, Germany, let's, I have a, a, an article to read to uh, uh, read about the history of Germany here. Germany's green energy disaster, a cautionary tale for world leaders. Now, this was written in 2013, and I remember reading a long time ago, and I found this article And I wanted to share with you guys to get you to understand the history of green energy, which they are burying because they don't want you to know the truth. In 2000, Germany passed a major green initiative, which forced providers to purchase renewable energy at exorbitant fixed prices and feed that power through their grids for a period of 20 years from promulgated by a socialist green coalition government. This initiative has since been embraced by Germany's conservative liberal majority, led by Chancellor Angela Merkel. In fact, Merkel has doubled down on Germany's renewable energy push. Despite heavy government subsidization, renewable energies simply aren't filling the void. A former German environmental minister told the New York Times last year, there is a, which is 2012, there is a great danger that this project will fail with the devastating economic and social consequences. A year later, the project is failing. 
resulting in what one German industry expert termed a chaotic standstill. Merkel Energy Plan called for an addition of 25,000 megawatts of sea-based wind turbine power by 2030. However, through the first six months of 2012, only 45 megawatts had been added to Germany's existing 200 megawatt supply. According to an industry analyst quoted by Reuters, and despite massive subsidies funded by household energy surcharge, which currently co compromises 14% of German power, power bills, major wind projects in the North Sea are being delayed or canceled due to skittish investors. The basic problem, wind farms are notoriously unreliable as a power source. Not, not only that, they take up vast amounts of space and kill tens of thousands of birds annually. Generating energy with wind involves extreme fluctuations because it depends on the weather and includes periods without any recognizable capacity for days or suddenly occurring supply peaks that push the grid to its limits. A 2012 report from Germany energy expert Dr. Gunter, there is a threat of power outages over large areas, mainly in wintertime when the demand is high and less power gets delivered from abroad. A typical 20 turbine wind farm occupies an area of 250 acres. In order for Merkel to achieve her objective, she would have to cover an area six times the size of New York with turbines. But surprisingly, the erection of all the turbines along with the infrastructure needed to route their inconsistent power supply back to German heartland would be astronomical. The cost of our energy reform and restructuring of energy provision could amount to around 1 trillion euros by the end of 2030s, Germany's environmental minister announced last month. That sum could rise even higher as last month a Harvard University study revealed the extent to which the power generation potential of wind farms has been overestimated, which is so common. They are overestimating all the green tech. Because renewable power sources have been so unreliable, Germany has been forced to construct numerous new coal plants. In other words, Germany is dirtying the planet in the name of clean energy and sticking its citizens with an ever-escalating tab so it can subsidize an energy source which will never generate sufficient power. This is the cautionary tale of command energy economics one other nations would be wise to heed. Guys, Germany was on the forefront trying to push the green energy agenda. Fast forward, fast forward to today. Germany triggers gas alarm stage accuses Russia of economic attack, okay? Uh, Germany triggered the alarm stage of its emergency gas plan on Thursday in response to following Russian supplies but stopped short of allowing utilities to pass on soaring energy costs to customers in Europe's largest economy. The measure is the latest escalation in the standoff between Europe and Moscow since the Russian invasion of Ukraine that has exposed the bloc's dependence on Russian gas supplies and sparked a frantic search for alternative energy sources. We must not fool ourselves. The cut in gas supplies is an economic attack on U.S. by Russian President Vladimir Putin, economy minister Robert Hebeck said in a statement. Now, he's blaming Russia no different than, than our administration. But at the end of the day, if you had enough energy, if you're focusing on what worked, you would not be in this situation relying on Russia for your gas. Whether it was intentional or not, they, you could have taken the power out of Russian hands if you had developed fossil fuels. From now on, gas is a scarce commodity in Germany. We are therefore now obliged to reduce gas consumption now already in summer. So their only option is to reduce gas consumption. Reducing demand. I mean, there's only one way to grow your country, to grow your GDP. It's with energy. In fact, they have calculations where without fossil fuels, your GDP will be reduced to ashes. Without energy, we cannot grow. Just like that, that guy that had a time machine that came from the 1800s to this time, and he looks at the world with energy, he was blown away. He was shocked. He couldn't believe it. 
He took a vacation for the first time. It, it, you don't realize just how spoiled we have become. We don't appreciate it. We live like kings and queens because the kings had servants, and the servants did all the hard labor. They did all the work. Well, our servants is oil, and we don't respect it. And we're about to run out of those servants. And so here's a, a oil price forecast. This is a very... I, I really respect this source. They, uh, uh, they project all the way to 2026. And so they are estimating uh, by the end of this year, we'll be at $117 a barrel of oil. Uh, by the end of 2023, $173 a barrel. And by the end, uh, by June of 2024, about $187 a barrel. Now, uh, they use a lot of data a lot of calculations to come up with these numbers. In the past, they've been pretty accurate. Um, they didn't see COVID, um, and, and so they had to change their numbers. But uh, uh, other than that, they've been uh, right on, okay? And so here's, here's what you need to understand. Okay, so right now, oil prices, uh, let's refresh this because oil prices are cha changing. Uh, right now, oil prices, uh, WTI crude is $107 a barrel and Brent crude is $112 a barrel. Now, here's something you need to understand. Why has, have oils dropped from $120, $130 a barrel? Well, it's really simple. Recession fears are driving prices down, okay? And so the administration in place, the Biden administration is doing whatever they can to reduce oil. Now, we all know that the media is on the left side. Most of it is, okay, other than a few other news sources. I mean, Fox News um, is, is typically more on the right-hand side. But most of the media out there is left, okay? Uh, they're very, uh, they're, they're, they're with the agenda, the green agenda, okay? There is an agenda that is pushing Google, that is pushing Twitter, that is pushing all of the social media giants to ban uh, any chatter that goes against green energy. And so that's, that's all public information out there, okay? And so here's what you guys need to understand. What Joe Biden is doing, I mean, they're using the media to try to put fear to reduce oil demand, oil consumption. And I mean, that's Germany's only option at this point. And here's the other side. They are removing the gas tax. All that is going to do is a temporary effect. Is it going to lower gas prices? Yes. But, but naturally, you're going to consume more gasoline. It's only going to exasperate the situation. In addition, the reason why crude oil prices have dropped is quite simply because the bottleneck is, is refining. We don't have enough refine, refiners out there. Right now, we have a global refining capacity of about 80 million barrels a day. Now, it's not that simple. Well, Sean, uh, if we are consuming 100 barrels a day and we're only, only able to refine 80 million barrels a day, then that means 20 million barrels a day is piling up. No, that's not true, okay? And so crude oil is consumed in many different ways. And also there's a lot of countries that consume more oil than they need to stock. I mean, there's many, many, many other aspects to fossil fuels, okay? Refining more oil than we've ever refined before, but there's a bottleneck there, okay? And so that is also reducing, because if we were able to refine uh, uh, 200 million barrels a day, we would. And then we'd catch up and then oil prices would skyrocket like you wouldn't believe. Okay. And so that's why there is a disconnect between high gas prices and high natural gas prices and high, high, uh, uh refined product prices. Because if, if, if oil prices would, should be more around $150 a barrel to reflect the current gas prices, but they're not okay. Oil prices remain suppressed because of that reason. Now, here's the other thing. You got Russia. Russia, right now, they're exporting as much oil as the pre-war, before the Ukraine war happened. 
Okay. They've diverted oil to other countries. I mean, China and India, I mean, they're still buying oil, cheaper oil, like crazy right now. And so they're, they're exporting just as much oil as is the pre-war. And so that's why this EIA data is coming out and saying, oh, we, we actually uh, uh, stockpiled more oil, oil than was expected. Well, that's because Russia oil has not been taken into account, has not been taken off the market. Okay? That's eventually going to happen. And what is that doing? Because of the refinery bottlenecks, all that's doing is reducing the price of oil and reducing the amount of investment in oil. I mean, if oil was at $150 a barrel, I mean, oil stocks would go through the roof. I mean, as in when I say oil stocks, I'm, not, I'm talking about uh, investment, investing in stocks. Oil and gas companies would have more money than they knew what to do with. And what would we do? Would we drill like crazy? And, and, and of course, oil prices would come down, okay? Um, and so this is only going to exasperate the situation with the suppression of oil prices. It's only going to uh, uh, exasperate the future uh, problem that we have. We have an oil deficit, meaning we consume more oil than we are producing. Now, eventually, eventually we're going to be in a situation where we just simply don't have enough oil, okay? And so I'm going to read a couple articles here. OPEC moles went to fire its last oil production bullets, okay? The cartel is running out of capacity to, to, to pump more crude. While Biden is scheduled to visit Saudi Arabia in mid-July, the trip may have a lesser impact on OPEC plus deliberations than many think. After rebuffing White House pressure for a year, the cartel is keen to focus on supply and demand. Thus, the key input will be the 2023 market outlook that OPEC will unveil on July 12th. The forecast is likely to paint a bullish picture. Despite recession fears, oil demand is probably going to grow by at least 1.5 million barrels a day in 2023 after a 3.4 million increase this year for demand. Now, so they're, you're using recession fears to reduce the demand for fossil fuels. It's not working. Neither is high gas prices. $110 and $120 barrel is already too expensive, damaging the global growth outlook by forcing the Fed into an aggressive tightening campaign. But unless the global economy deteriorates substantially over the next five to six weeks or China goes back into lockdown, the view inside OPEC Plus is the group would likely need to increase output again. The need for extra crude will become par particularly acute as by lo late October, the U.S. will wind down the sales from its strategic petroleum reserve. So remember, America, uh, Biden released one million barrels a day from its strategic petroleum reserve which right now are adding more oil into the market than some medium-sized OPEC plus member countries. Yet hiking production is becoming difficult. By August, all OPEC plus nations except Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates will be pumping at full throttle. On paper, Riyadh, which is Saudi Arabia, and Abu Dhabi will still have a combined 2 million barrels a day of spare capacity, but neither has produced above their forthcoming August levels for more than a handful of weeks. Both insist they can sustain those lofty production rates, but many traders are skeptical, which I am too. For the oil market, what matters is not just how much real spare capacity is left, but how much the market believes is left. Right now, investors are skeptical about how much room remains and that suspicion is starting to filter into the price of oil with the market demanding higher risk premium. Okay, so Saudi, Saudi oil production will hit 11 million barrels a day in August, a level that the kingdom has only sustained in the past for a few weeks. Okay, so if you look here, in 1995, they were producing 8 million barrels a day. And as you can see here, they slowly grew and it fluctuated up and down, up and down. And in the peaks... Uh, and highs here um, are upwards of 10 million barrels a day, and they grew. Now, if you look here, 
they only hit 11.6 million barrels a day for a very short period of time. Now, that's when uh, Russia and Saudi Arabia decided to flood the market with oil to try to break the backs of U.S. shale. Okay. Now, that was a very short period of time. Now, oil and gas, it declines. Gas, that gas pressure in the structure slowly declines over time. But you could take any oil well. I could take an oil well today and open that sucker up. And I could get that well to produce 500 barrels a day, but it will only do that for a short period of time. And then if I shut it off, that gas pressure will increase over time. And then I open it up again and it will flood, right? But if I keep it open, it won't stay like that for very long. Well, that's what Saudi Arabia is doing. And that's why they're claiming, oh yeah, we've already proven that we could produce 11.6 million barrels a day. We'll do it again. Look, they did it for a short period of time and you can't prove that. On balance, the latter cautious view has more merit if OPEC plus runs completely out of spare capacity or investors believe it has then oil could become a runaway market from today's standpoint more crude is needed but it also clear that high prices are part of the solution to the current problem oil demand needs to decelerate saudi arabia should keep a bullet in the chamber okay and so the like i say they keep saying this well we need to reduce oil demand okay so stop driving stop charging your iphone Stop charging your Tesla. That ain't going to happen, guys. I'm, I'm not going to reduce the amount of oil that I use. Um, and so, and so there's a lot of articles talking about how uh, Dallas Fed surging costs hamper U.S. shell growth. And so the Fed rate hike is causing the price of, uh, of, of financing to be more expensive. And also material prices are going up substantially and it's reducing shell growth. I mean, shell is done, guys. Uh, Warren Buffett must really love oil. Berkshire uh, Hathaway invested a half a billion dollars in oil uh, uh, this week. Uh, oil prices will likely remain elevated at over $100 per barrel for the rest of this year. Uh, India's top refiner sees oil staying above $100 this year. Guys, I'm here to tell you, the current administration in the world does not understand the importance of oil. And if they do, they're lying to you. The green technology is at its infant stage. It's barely walking and we expect it to run. We need oil, guys. Probably the most patriotic thing you can do is drill an oil well and produce oil. If Germany in 2000 took my advice and focused on developing their natural resources, fossil fuels, they would not be in the situation they are. See, Russia already knew this was going to happen. They saw the green initiative. They saw the writing all on the wall. Nobody understands oil better than Saudi Arabia and Russia. But the reason why America wants to get off fossil fuels is because as long as we're on fossil fuels, it gives Russia and Saudi Arabia power. But if we could generate green technology, we don't have to go begging to Saudi Arabia like Biden is about to do. He said, oh, hey, guys, has nothing to do with oil. It has everything to do with oil. And Putin is in Syria because of oil. Guys, it's all about oil. And Russia is continuing to sell their fossil fuels. Why? Why would China, why would India, why would Europe buy oil from a country that is bombing? And mod this is the modern day world where we have social media. We're seeing people dying every single day. It's not the days of old. It's not during the times of Adolf Hitler. They are bombing Ukrainian citizens, a peaceful country for absolutely no reason other than wanting power, wanting a land grab. And we continue to buy their fossil fuels, their oil, their energy. It must mean that energy is a lot more important 
Fossil fuels is a lot more important than the world and the media and the news and the current administration is making you believe. All right, guys, I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. If you like this channel, please subscribe. And we will talk soon. Thanks.